Hey there, Nick Chitakis here. In this video, we're going to go over using the trap command in a shell script, which is a really handy way to run a function or a set of commands after your program exited in a specific way. For example, anytime that your program exits, you can run a specific function. Or for example, if you want to do something different when the user hits control C, you can also trap that with a sigint and then run whatever command that you want. There are exceptions here with kill nine, that's an untrappable signal, and we'll get into the gory details throughout this video. But uh, this is a really handy pattern when, you know, let's say you have some script that's running five different functions. Maybe you're curling out to some site or you're making some temp directory, or you're trying to get some stats about a file that may or may not exist. And let's say that you always want to write out a log file, whether or not that script uh, works successfully all the way through or not. Well, without using trap, you might be inclined to, you know, wrap all those functions with different if conditions to be like, you know, if this command in the function failed, then, you know, make sure that you turn off set E before you run the command so that the script doesn't halt. And then maybe call your log function, uh, you know, in different ways, depending on if it worked or not. And before you know it, you have this really convoluted mess of all sorts of different if conditions and calling your log function in like a million different spots. And with trap, we can actually solve that in a very nice way. And in the script, we're going to go over the example of always wanting to write out a log file, whether or not some commands in the script worked or not. But the same exact way that we're going to go over using trap will work for basically other use cases as well. Like, for example, instead of writing a log file, you know, maybe your script creates a temp file and you want to make sure that the temp file is always deleted, right? Instead of the log here, where, you know, maybe you're broadcasting a message to Slack or Discord or some other chat and you just want to make sure that, you know, that event always gets sent out, whether or not the script worked, you know, things like that. And uh, yeah, so let's go over the script really quick. This has no trapping enabled. We're going to enable trapping uh, in a couple of minutes here once we just go over the basic th basics of the script here. So I am going to open up another window here just so we can run the script here. And uh, if I run this, then it is going to expect me to pass in uh, a current path here. Basically, this script is going to log out things like whatever path that you passed in. It's going to let you know if the path exists, true or false, basically, and then also count the files in the path. Maybe there's one file in there, zero files, 100 files, whatever, you know, all of that. And then we also get a timestamp here too and see the output of that. But notice that we are not getting this log output. This is normal. We're not using trap yet. And, you know, I'm going to save you the uh, torture of adding all the if conditions around here. We're just going to go to the trap method in a second here. But yeah, let me put in, I don't know, a different path here where, you know, maybe the path doesn't exist. We still get this error here, right? We can't ls on that directory. And then since I have set E enabled here, as soon as this lsla fails here, then the script halts on this line and nothing else executes. You know, we don't even get to see things happen here. But uh, if I do this on a path that does exist, I think I did temp yep or something, you know, we can see here that things are just hanging indefinitely. You know, the lsla here for the path input succeeded, cool. And then, uh, yeah, then we just count the files in there as well. That's another function down here. This just uses find here. I'll break down this command in a second here. But yeah, once we get to the bottom here, then we basically sleep forever and then we just wait. So basically the script is hanging forever. And the reason I had this uh, little sleep here at the end is so that we can actually demonstrate using trap so we can trap things like control C or sending other signals. I just wanted to make sure that the script continues to run so we actually have an opportunity to see how those work. Now, I could have just slept here without using background and wait, although that introduced to some scenarios where uh, most shells, at least with Bash, like they will not handle signal processing when sleep or something like that is running in the foreground. So I just threw it in the background. Feel free to read more details on that if you want. It's not super important for the sake of this video. Kind of feel like maybe I'll do future videos on just uh, signals in general. Maybe we'll go into more detail there. But that's basically how this script works. And you know, I just hit Control C there to cancel that. And uh, yeah, so that's the problem set, right? We want to have this thing logged out all the time, whether or not the script works or not. And uh, let's start trapping some things. So let's start with the most basic case here, which is just uh, trap, which is the name of the, the command that we're going to be running. Then we can say the command that we want to actually run. In this case, it's just a function here. Uh, but this could be multiple commands with and, and. You know, if, if there's multiple uh, commands like that, you may want to put them in quotes there, or if your command has spaces or whatever. And then what we need to do now is just provide in one or more signals that we want to trap. So there is a special special signal that we can do, which is exit, which is going to basically capture all the signals, like, you know, basically everything except for kill nine. And the other one, I think it's like stop or something. Uh, it's just untrappable at the operating system level. But let's just run it with this and just see how that works here. 
And uh, we're going to go over, you know, how you can list all the different signals as well. But yeah, let's run this again and uh, let's do the nope one. Doesn't exist here. But we can see, though, that, you know, LS failed, but we still got our log output here because we are trapping on any type of exit here. And we're going to say, like, okay, cool, like run the log command. You know, I don't need to run the log command. I can run like a who am I in there, right? And we can see, like, who am I? Nick. Or you can put in, like, you know, some echo in here, like whatever you want to do. And that's going to do something very similar here. You know, it's just going to run the command in here. It's basically going to eval it. Uh, I don't know if it's literally using eval, but you know, that's the, the basic scenario here. So that is pretty cool. Nice. Let's do it again when uh, something works and we can see here. Yep. You know, everything is good to go here. It's hanging like usual at the sleep. We got to the end here. Let me just do a control C now and we can see, yeah, even after the control C, this exit handles that and boom, there we go. We have this over here. Now we can put a specific thing in here as well. Uh, like for example, if we just want to capture control C and not everything, or we can have uh, multiple things as well, but yeah, let's just do another trap here and just say, I don't know, trap. And we'll, I guess we'll just use echo for this case here. We'll do echo like, you know, I heard you like control C or something like that. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to do on a sig int here, which is control C. And now if we do this and, uh, we hit control C, it is going to execute this echo over here. And uh, we can see both of these traps executed, right? Uh, the one for control C, as well as the one for the exit over here. And we can see the order that they're in. I actually don't know if the order defined here matters. That's a good question. Uh, let's see how that actually works. So control C here. Yeah, it didn't seem to make a difference. So you can order these in whatever order that you want. And uh, yeah, as mentioned before, you can put multiple signals in one line like this. Uh, we don't want to have a duplicate one here. I don't think this is going to work. You know, I'd have to delete that line up there, assuming this doesn't work. But oh, interesting. Okay, so it does work. So uh, it didn't exit. Well, okay, so this one took priority, right? This one with exit will lag didn't work. So I don't know. Honestly, in my day to day, I am using exit like 99% of the time. I don't really capture multiple, but you know, there may be a case where you want to do that. So yeah, now you have some options here. Cool. So that is that. And you know, let's say though, you want to do something like a, a kill nine. This is basically like a death touch on a process. This is, uh, you know, operating system level stuff like this script will be shut down no matter what. This is uh, technically an untrappable signal. And that completely makes sense, right? Because uh, if you could trap a kill nine, then your script, if you were a bad actor, could just be like, well, that's fine. Like, I'm just going to trap it and then like sleep forever or do something or like RMRF your root directory. Like, you know, there's no way then for the operating system to protect you as the end user of running programs if that weren't, uh, if that were trappable. So let's try that out here. Like, can we actually uh, cheat death? Like, uh, we cheated death? Like, probably not. Well, definitely not. Spoiler alert. But, you know, if we do this here, uh, say kill, you know, it's a kill nine. What, what can we do here? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna run the script. All right, and then I guess I'll open up another window. Uh, is this gonna block me? No, I don't think so. But I can just do a ps uh, box script here on, I guess, uh, demo is the name of the script here. And, well, that's getting a little bit small to read here. But we can see the PID that we wanna kill here is 16577. So we can send a kill nine to 16577. You know, this kill nine is basically the same as this here. And by the way, you can, put, you know, SIG in front of that. Uh, I'm just not putting SIG in front of that. But yeah, this is basically sending a kill nine to this PID and the process will be killed, but it is not gonna execute our log, right? We can see it's been killed. Why? Because we just uh, can't trap that. Even with a special execute over here, it's just not going to work. Completely makes sense though. But everything else is uh, pretty standard here. So if I run this one here, and we do another PXL wrap, whatever, and I do another kill, but this time I'll send a sig term, which is basically, you know, a graceful stop. Then we can do 16696 uh, here. That's a new PID here for this demo script. And if you run this one, we should expect to see the output here because this exit one is going to capture that. So let's see if that works. Yep, totally works as expected here. We got our log due to this one executing here. This had nothing to do with that, right? So I can just rerun this just uh, one last time here. Just for clarity, yep, this is a new PID here. And then this PID is 16748. This will still stop and look at the log. Great. And we can also see here too, right? Like the path get output file exists true. And then the file count in this case is two because in this directory, I just put in some like cool and cool two files that are not important. Um, but yeah, let's go over a little bit, you know, coding patterns, like how do we make this work in a reasonably clean way? And then we'll go over some other signals that we can look at using some commands. But uh, yeah, let's go back to the script here. So the first thing I do, right? We just get some input from the user here. First argument, we default to nothing there. And we want to set some defaults for our log, right? We want to say the file exists uh, doesn't exist by default. And for the file count, I just went with a negative one here because I kind of figured, well, you know, there could be zero files in a directory 
or there could be 100, but there's never going to be negative one. So like the negative one case lets us know, you know, if we were like consuming this log somewhere, then yeah, negative one is like really like, hey, this didn't exist. Like putting zero here as a default would be a little bit ambiguous, right? Did it actually work, but there's zero or is there just zero files in there? Although technically, you know, this would be false zero, eh, whatever, not important for the sake of this video. I just chose that for this. Then we have uh, our log function. And one super important thing is like, we want to have our traps before things can start to break here. Because if I define these traps all the way on the bottom, then, or let's say, you know, after we run some commands here, this is not going to work as you would expect here. So if I do like, or maybe I don't know what you expect, like probably maybe you did expect this, but you know, in this directory that didn't exist here, what happens here, you know, code gets executed, blah, 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 tries to run the LSLA, fails due to set E, and then that's it. Like the trap stuff didn't even get a chance uh, or an opportunity to run. So yeah, I just, I just put them as high as you can in the file just to ensure that they actually get set here uh, based on things that may or may not fail. And then, yeah, so this log, you know, multi-line string, since it's a JSON log, it's a little bit um, easier to read on multiple lines here. And, you know, I didn't want to do echo with single quotes because then you can't really um, evaluate these variables. So, I mean, there's ways around that, but I found this to be pretty nice. Also, like, honestly, the sake of this video, like the reason I ended up even making this one is because, yeah, I was broadcasting, broadcasting something to Slack in a script, and I wanted to make sure this... Uh, lag format got broadcasted in a specific way. And then it got parsed by Datadog, whatever, like, no, 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 not important. But that's how, how all this video materialized. But yeah, we have a multi-line string here with a couple different JSON fields. You know, these don't have quotes because this one's a Boolean, this one's an integer, there's a string. And then, you know, this date time over here, if I run this, we can see what that produces here. Well, it's literally the same as over here, but um, yeah, it's just basically fairly ISO standard date. I think it is no time zone in there, but it's good enough for the, this example here. Uh, I don't have Mac OS available to run. And I know there's some finicky things with this. I just wanted to grab something that's going to work probably on Mac OS and Linux for sure. But uh, yeah, let us know in the comments if this doesn't happen to work in Mac OS, minor detail. But uh, really important takeaways here is, you know, we have this log function. Okay. Then we have a couple of different functions, the list contents and count files. You know, they just basically do what they need to do, right? List out the files here. And then also we'll find, and we'll break this down in a minute here. And then, yeah, we just have the sleep stuff here. But the interesting takeaway here is, you know, how would you code your functions to handle this type of thing is, well, since we are using set E in the script, you know, we can guarantee, at least from the perspective of uh, the shell script, like working due to how bash should work, like this works, then we can be fairly guaranteed that, you know, this is going to be able to, uh, you know, anything after this command is fair game, right? So now we can say like, yeah, the path does exist because, you know, this command didn't fail, set E never triggered to halt the script. So yep, we're good to go here. And likewise with the count files, well, this count files defaults to negative one over here. This is only going to be set to something else if this find command actually works. So let me run that find command uh, real quick over here. You know, if I just do find temp, nope, I guess we'll do first. And then we want to find just files in there. Then uh, we'll see that, uh, yeah, no such file or directory. That's going to fail. This will never get set to what it needs to be. And then we, if we do it on, yeah, we can see that, uh, yeah, we have that. And if we didn't limit it to files, then, you know, it includes the actual directory itself in there. That's why I limited it to files there. And then uh, I just did a word count on that just to get the number of, you know, line length there. So we have two entries, we have two, and then, yep, there's our file account. So yeah, that's pretty much how all of this is set up in terms of, you know, how you might decide to code some things. You know, if you had some uh, function that called curl or did some other stuff, like you would just have your, your good stuff, like, you know, setting these variables afterwards. And, you know, they don't need to be global variables. You can, you know, set up your script however you want, but that's the basic pattern, right? Reasonable same defaults in the unhappy case, and then set your stuff for the happy case here as needed, whether or not this log function executes when things worked or not. We'll get all the details that we need here and we're done. So one other thing here too, if you just want to see what all the available signals are, you can run, you can run trap dash L, but if you are running Z shell and I can't speak for every other shell, I am running Z shell here, uh, trap L is not going to return anything. So you actually need to use bash here. So you can just do bash dash C like trap like this, and then you can see all the signals there. Alternatively, I could have just ran bash itself, put myself into a bash prompt like this, and then just run trap L, but yeah, I, I prefer the syntax highlighting approach. So that's why I went with this one over here. So cool. Uh, yeah, these are all the different uh, signals that you can have. You can see kill nine is a sig kill. I think stop also is another one that doesn't work. Don't quote me on that one, but uh, I think so. And then, yeah, we can see here like the int, that's a control C, that's two. And, you know, when we were using those kill commands before, you know, if you did a kill dash two or a kill dash int, you know, that's going to both result in two. And then you can uh, capture this using int 
for second and I don't think two actually works, but let's just find this out together. Uh, let me see. Let's run this script and on the yep one. Nope, it's on yep, not yes. <laughs> and then I'll control C this one. Did it actually work? Oh, cool, it actually does work. That's good to know. Although honestly, for clarity, you know, this is like a magic number type of thing. I would almost always certainly use in there. I would never use two. But, you know, if you want to use two, there you go, it actually works there. So yeah, going back to this list here, you can see there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, I don't think exit itself is actually listed here, you know, the special one over here, but yep, you can use it and it basically accounts for all of these together. So you don't need to explicitly put every single like one in a space separated list. But that's gonna do it for this video, I think. Uh, let me know in the comments below, you know, when was the last time you used Trap to handle some use case or, you know, did you learn something new in this video? Is this the first time hearing about it? So also, yeah, let me know in the comments below if you like the video, uh, give it a like, it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.